What I want to talk with you about today is eight key differentiating facts between, or factors, I should say, between chasing a woman and pursuing a woman. Uh, I had made a post uh, about three or four days ago on Instagram, and I said that a man should never chase, whether it's clients or employment or women, that men should not chase. And about 80% of the people who read that post understood what I was talking about. There was 20% of the people who read that post and had no idea and completely misinterpreted and misconstrued what I was talking about. Because when I'm talking about chasing and pursuing and the difference between the two, uh, I'm talking about a healthy pursuit of the things that you desire. I learned a long time ago that the more that a man chases, whether it's employment or chasing clients or chasing women, the more inclined those individuals that he's quote unquote chasing are, are interested in, in, in running and turning the other direction. So I'm not talking about when I say chase, healthily pursuing the things that you desire. You should be doing that. In fact, I believe that a mature man does that. He knows exactly what he wants. He articulates it to himself. He understands it himself and he articulates it to the people who uh, he's interested in pursuing. And then he goes after that thing. He works for those things. Uh, I think it's very immature on the other hand to chase and be at a woman's beck and call and, and make yourself subservient to other individuals and, and, and throw yourself at other people, whether they want you or not. It's not healthy. Uh, it's not good for you. It's not conducive to a healthy relationship. And so I really wanted to take some time today and talk with you about the distinctions between chasing and pursuing, uh, so there wouldn't be as much misunderstanding. And I know a lot of guys might think that maybe we're just talking semantics here, and maybe we are. Maybe these words are interchangeable, but what I really want to do is help you determine and see the difference between the two. It's not so much the words, it's the meaning and the ideas behind the two. And then you can use whatever word you want, but my goal is to give you uh, a healthy perspective into how to do this thing. I learned a long time ago, like I said earlier, uh, when I was starting my financial planning practice, that the more that I pursued and chased, let me back up, the more that I chased individuals, potential clients, the more they ran because it's human nature. It's human nature to not be as attracted to the things that we can easily have. It's the things that we can't easily have, the things that we need to work for and towards that are more attractive to us. So that's why specifically in the context of women, uh, women, it seems like have a tendency to be more interested in the quote unquote bad boys, not the nice guys. Why is that? Well, the nice guys are always around. They're like a lost little puppy with their tail between their legs, hoping to get patted occasionally by a girlfriend or a potential girlfriend. And although it might be flattering at first to a woman, she's going to bore and get tired of that very, very quickly because she can so easily have you. And, and there's no mystery. There's no effort on her part. And therefore, she doesn't really want you. And you get discarded very, very quickly. A bad boy, on the other hand, is somebody who has maintained some element of mystery and allure and intrigue and curiosity. And so a woman, when she finds this bad boy, has to actually work towards having this this guy that she's after. And I'm not saying that you need to move to the opposite end of the spectrum and be be a complete a-hole and a jerk uh, and dismissive and and treat her like uh, garbage. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we, as mature, healthy males, men, take a page from the bad boy playbook and incorporate it into our own life. Now, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is going to apply to clients and employees or employers as well, Uh, but specifically, I'm talking about the context of of women. And again, the differentiating factors between uh, pursuing a woman and chasing a woman. And I've written eight things down here. I've got my notepad here and... Uh, I thought a lot about what I wanted to share with you today. So we're going to talk about the differentiating factors between chasing and pursuing, immature and mature. So here we go. These aren't in any particular order, but uh, you'll see that all of them are important. Number one, when it comes to uh, your desire for a woman, uh, a, a man who chases has not clearly articulated and or set up the boundaries. In fact, there are no boundaries. And because there are no boundaries, he allows himself to get pushed on, stepped on, stepped over, beat up. It's actually quite pathetic. 
Now you may have fallen into this trap. I know I certainly have. You can definitely, definitely recommend or, or recognize when other men have fallen into this trap and they're walking around like little puppy dogs, like little lap dogs. And, and they do everything at the, at the drop of a hat for a woman. Uh, it's not healthy. It doesn't look good. The optics, of course, aren't there. And also, it's not conducive, like I said earlier, to a healthy relationship. Having no boundaries in place, although it might seem like a good idea because that's what you're supposed to do, is supposed to serve her, and you are, uh, if there's no boundaries for your service and for your attention and your energy, again, that's not conducive to a healthy relationship. On the other hand, a healthy approach, more of the pursuit approach, is healthy, well-established boundaries that you know what you stand for, that you know what you don't, that you're, always, that you're not so always readily available when she says or has a request or asks for something that it isn't always yes or that you'll drop everything else that you're doing. It's, it's, it's establishing what those boundaries are. It's maintaining relationships with friends. It's continuing to pursue hobbies that are important to you, making her a part of your life, but not all of it. Uh, you've got to have those boundaries in place. You've got to learn to say no. And it's difficult, especially in a new relationship to say no, but the better that you get at that, the longer the relationship is going to last, the more connected you guys are going to be. You're going to maintain some element of, of mystery and intrigue and fascination when you aren't so readily available. And it's a much more effective way to develop a relationship with, with a, a partner. So number one, no boundaries for chasing healthy, well-established boundaries for uh, pursuing. Number two is that when a, a, a man is chasing a woman, uh, he makes his woman the center of his universe. So she is the, the God, right? She or the goddess, right? Everything revolves around her. And if she needs something, you drop it. If she makes a request, you absolutely do it. Uh, if there's some sort of uh, thing that you need to do to take care of yourself, but it con uh, conflicts with what she needs, then your stuff automatically gets pushed on the back burner and you worship her above all else. Wrong way to go about doing it, guys. A pursuit of a woman, on the other hand, is making yourself the center of your universe. I know that sounds selfish. I know that sounds conceited. Uh, I know that guys are going to hear that and, and they're going to think that I I'm, I'm talking about being selfish. I'm not, maybe to a degree. I'm not talking about taking it to the extreme. I'm talking about learning to take care of yourself more effectively so that you can more adequately serve her or serve your clients or your children or the neighbors that you have, or maybe it's some sort of ecclesiastical service uh, or a community service or charitable organization that you belong to, but you are the center of your universe. You are the center of your universe. So the more that you can take care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, then the more capable you are of taking care of her. So I think the boundaries thing and the, and the, uh, the center of the universe thing go hand in hand. Uh, a, a man who has made a woman the center of his universe has no effective boundaries. A man, on the other hand, that has made himself the center of the universe and does it with the right motive and intention of serving other individuals can establish these boundaries that will keep the relationship in check and keep it thriving. And we've all heard the term, absence makes the heart grow fonder. This is what I'm talking about. I'm not saying not be present, I'm saying you don't have to be so readily available. And of course, the heart will grow fonder. Uh, number three, a man who is chasing a woman uh, has zero responsibility. In fact, he's shifted responsibility. He says that in order to be happy, then I need to serve her. Uh, in order to have what it is I want, this woman, for example, then she needs to... Uh, make me feel good or make me feel special. And she needs to do these types of things. And if she does that, then I'll be happy. Now, a more mature, appropriate way to handle this is pursuit of a woman, which is taking ultimate responsibility, which is that if you want certain things in a relationship, then it means that you're willing to improve upon yourself. Some of that might include her. And frankly, some of it might not. When I go work out, or I go to jujitsu, my wife doesn't come with me. Can she? Sure. Has she? Yes. Will she in the future? Probably at, at sometimes. But there's things that I do for myself and I take ultimate responsibility, not of the relationship, not of her. That's an unhealthy uh, way to go about the relationship. I'm talking about taking ultimate responsibility for myself and the things within my control. I can't control my wife. 
You can't control your girlfriend. You can't control the woman that you're after. And yet so many guys try to do this. They try to control so that they limit the pursuit or the chase, I should say. And it ends up coming back to bite them in the butt. Instead, learn to take ultimate responsibility and focus on yourself. And the more that you take responsibility for the things within your control, your mental health, your emotional health, your stability, your well-being, your physical health, the better off you're going to be. Take responsibility for your life. Be mature, be a man, and know that if you do, it's much more likely that she's going to be interested in you because you become attractive. So guess what? Rather than chasing her around, now you flip the script. And now because you've taken ultimate responsibility for your life and you've done what you need to do for yourself, now she's interested in you and potentially chasing and or pursuing you which is what you want it to be, not the other way around. Uh, This also ties in line with number four, which is that chasing a woman means you're looking for external validation. Chasing a woman means that you're looking for external validation. You are hoping that she responds to your chase. And if she does respond how you want her to respond, again, we're talking about responsibility. If she responds the way that you want her to respond, uh, then you're validated then you know you're the man or you know how good you are and you feel good about yourself because she's responded. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not above that. I don't think the most mature, healthy men in the world are above feeling good when they are accepted by another human being, whether it's a romantic relationship or pursuit or uh, a business endeavor. I mean, we feel good and validated when people say yes, of course. But what you ought to be thinking about is... Not how you can be validated by her, but how you can be validated by yourself. And this comes in in line with what I had just talked about, which is ultimate responsibility, is that you need to learn what makes you happy outside of what anything else externally is going on. Whether she's accepting you or not, can you be satisfied with your level of care and attention for yourself? Can you be satisfied with your pursuit towards mastery with regards to activities and hobbies and endeavors that you enjoy? Are you reading? Are you going into the gym? Are you pursuing other things outside of her? And are you getting better at those things? Are you becoming a master? Uh, Jack Donovan talks about one of the four tactical virtues as being mastery. And that's what we want. We want to become masterful. And in order to do that, we need to do the work required to validate ourselves. And here's the cool thing about this. When you learn to validate yourself and you have that internal confidence because you're doing it for yourself, there's something intriguing about you. There's something fascinating about you. This is why when you see a man, and, and guess what? Men respond to this as well. You see a man, a man walk into a room, maybe it's a business setting, You can look at that guy and say, you know what? There's just something about that guy. Prime example, Jocko Willink. I've had the opportunity to sit down with him on multiple occasions. We've become uh, friends and we've done some activities and things like that together. When an individual like him or Andy Frisella uh, walk into the room, he commands presence and attention. Why? Not because he's requesting it. He's commanded it. It's because he's worked so hard on himself that that level of confidence and clarity and focus and internal validation can't help but be felt and experienced by other individuals around you. So go to work on yourself, take ultimate responsibility, center yourself as the the, the center of your universe and, and strive for that internal validation. You will be more attractive when you do that. So that's number four. Number five, This is a big one because I had a lot of women come back to me when I made this post and that was funny is that women, they, they were the ones I think primarily who disagreed with me, which is because they, they took this wrong and maybe they like to be chased because they don't have to do any work. (laughs) And I'm not saying all women are like that, but I think that's human nature is that uh, a, a man when he's chasing, he begs for things. He begs for attention, he begs for resources, he begs for time, he begs for a look, he begs for a kiss, he begs for sex, he begs for things. And it's pathetic. It's desperate and it's pathetic. He hasn't earned those things and he thinks that he has a right to those things and because he doesn't have those, he's not externally validated. And then he begs her to come back or he begs her to give him a kiss or to, to sleep with him. And it's, it's sad. It's sad and it doesn't work. And it, it just, it looks bad 
and it feels bad. I mean, we've all had to be in that position, I'm sure, where we've begged for things and we've acted out of desperation. It's not right. It's not good. On the other hand, if a man's pursuing a woman, he doesn't beg for the things that he wants. He articulates it. He's not afraid to, to talk about it because certainly I think it should be brought up. We talk a lot about communication. If you're not communicating with another individual what you want, okay, well, that's a problem. If you see an attractive woman at the office, for example, uh, or in your office complex or your apartment complex and you've wanted to ask her out and you just think that she's going to miraculously read between the lines and, and ask you out, well, you got another thing coming. You have to articulate what it is you want, not beg. So if you go to a woman and, and you say, hey, you know, I'd, I, I'd really like to, to take you out for, for dinner. Okay, well, there's nothing wrong with that. That's pursuit. That's showing interest. You should be doing those things. If you're just sitting around hoping she comes around, you're going to be sitting around for a long time. Now, if she says no or comes up with all sorts of excuses, that's it, man. No means no. You know, maybe there's, maybe there's a little bit of a game there or a little bit of a pursuit there, but gosh, ultimately it's like, hey, you know, if she's not interested, she's not interested. There's millions and millions of other women in the universe. Uh, she is not the only woman around. She is not the center of your universe. And because we talked about these other steps, you're going to be okay and you realize you're going to be okay. Now, on the other hand, when you're uh, pursuing a woman, you need to let her know, here's what I want. I want to go on a date with you. I, I like you. I love you. Um, I'm attracted to you. Wh whatever, whatever that looks like. Uh, and here's what I want. I would like to date you. I would like to take you out. I mean, you're going to be very clear about what you want and you're going to communicate that expectation. And now the next step of this is you're going to work towards it. You're going to go to work on it, not to pander to her, but you're going to go to work on it so you can internally validate yourself, which is the point I made earlier. And then you can start putting the plans in motion to have the thing that you want. That's what men do. That's a mature approach to this thing is to know what you want, articulate what you want, and then actually go out and, and do the work required to have the thing that you're after. So no more begging, no more pandering, no more throwing ourselves at the feet of women. Instead, articulate what it is you want. This is a two-way street. If she doesn't want it, okay, well, move on. Move on. Don't be so readily available. Don't throw yourself at her. Don't, don't beg her. It's, it's, it's sad. It doesn't work. And even if it does, it's only going to work temporarily before she realizes you're a loser, you're weak, and she's not interested in you anymore. Instead, articulate what you want, then actively go out and pursue it. I think that's number five. I'm just making some notes here on my, uh, my trusty notepad. Uh, <clears throat> number six, when you're chasing, what you're doing with women is that you're always asking for permission. Can I go do this? Can I have this? Can you give me this time? Can you give me this attention? Where would you like to go to eat? Can, can we do this instead? Guys, and I've talked about this before and people misunderstood this as well. We don't ask for permission. We don't ask for permission. I don't ask my wife for permission to do things. There's a distinction here. I don't want you to misunderstand. I'm not saying that you shouldn't include her in the decision-making process. I'm not saying that you guys shouldn't collectively, if you're in a marriage or relationship, for example, that you shouldn't collectively and mutually agree upon and decide upon things that are going to impact both of you. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that a, a mature, healthy man who wants a mature, healthy relationship is not going to ask for permission all the time. Instead, when he's pursuing what he's going to be doing is he's going to be assertive. He's going to be assertive in, he, in what he wants. He's going to take initiative towards what he wants. Yes, he's going to articulate it like I made uh, in point five, but he's also going to be assertive. And sometimes he's going to make the decision. Hey, I made a decision and here's where we're going to eat. I'm not even going to ask you. I'm mean, I going to take your preferences into consideration. Sure. But you know what? I think the majority of women want to be led. They want to be led by somebody who's clear, somebody who's articulate, uh, articulate, a man who knows exactly what he wants, and a man who takes the initiative to go out and get it. So are you pursuing her? Or, or her? Are you uh, making the arrangements? Are you taking the first step towards being intimate? These are all things that you can do and all things that you should be doing. If you're not doing that, and you're asking for permission for her hand or, hey, can I have a kiss? Or, hey, we'd like to do this. It's not going to work, guys. It's not going to work. Of course, be respectful. Please don't misunderstand me. No means no. I'm not telling you to be disrespectful, especially when it comes to intimacy. But you know what? Sometimes you got to be bold and you got to be courageous and you've got to take her in a way uh, as long as she's on board with it. Throw that disclaimer out there. Uh, but you've, you've got you've to assert yourself and you've got to show some initiative. 
Uh, number seven, we've got a couple of more here because I think I have eight. Yes, eight. Uh, number seven is, and I wrote two notes down here. If you're chasing, you're blinded by her. And the subtitle or, or the sub note I made on this is that you're delusional. You're operating in a weird sort of delusional reality. Uh, and you overlook red flags. And guys, this one is huge. I see this so often in our Facebook group is that men continue to overlook red flags because he's attracted to her because he's never had another girlfriend before. You can do all these other points to make sure you fix that situation um, because the sex is good. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons that men will overlook red flags and, and they won't even, they, they can't even recognize them. They can't even see them because they're so blinded and delusional about reality or the first time they ever got a girl or the first time uh, they, they ever had somebody say, had somebody say yes to them. It's sad. Like don't overlook the red flags because the worst thing that can happen in this situation, and this actually might happen, is that uh, the relationship continues because she likes this subservient little whipping boy and you overlook these red flags and you get married to this woman and then five years, 10 years, you have two kids, three kids, you've got a house, you've got other assets with her. And then all of a sudden, uh, these red flags that you failed to address because you weren't behaving like a man come back to bite you in the ass. And now all of a sudden you find yourself divorced. She's got your kids, which that's a family court system. We can talk all about that another time. Uh, and you're pissed off because she's going to battle with you or she's acting like a bitch or she's being unreasonable. Well, shame on you. Shame on you. I already told you, you can't control other people. You can only control yourself. And so if you're telling me that you're going to take somebody who's uh, maybe mentally unstable, and I'm not saying all women are like that, but if you're taking somebody like that and has all sorts of little red flags that you've ignored because the sex is good or because you love this woman, shame on you, not her. There's a, there's one of, I think it's one of uh, Aesop's fables. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a story. Uh, this kid goes down to the river and he's going to cross the river. And before he crosses the river, he sees a snake on the ground and the snake says, Hey, will you pick me up? And will you take me across the river? I need to get across. And the kid says, no, I'm not going to pick you up. You're going to bite me. And the snake says, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to bite you. I'm not going to bite you. I just need to get across the river. Please help me. So the kid picks him up and he starts carrying him across the river and the snake turns to him and says, I'm cold. I'm really cold. Um, this water's cold and I'm getting wet. Can you put me inside of your jacket? Just put me inside of your jacket. Keep me warm. We'll get across the river and then I'll leave. You'll leave and we'll both go our separate ways and everything will be fine. And the kid says, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. And the snake says, I'm not going to bite you. I promise. I'm not going to bite you. So what does the kid do? He takes the snake, puts him, in the puts him in the jacket and takes the kid or the snake across the river. They get to the other side of the river and the kid reaches down in his jacket and the snake bites him. And the kid looks down at the snake and says, why did you bite me? You said you weren't going to bite me. I was doing you a favor. I ran you across this river. I did everything that I could to help you. And you said you weren't going to bite me, but you bit me. And the snake says, you knew what I was when you picked me up. And yet you picked me up. You put me inside of your jacket. You carried me across the river. I'm a snake. Snakes bite. Guys, this is what happens when you overlook red flags. You knew what she was when you attached yourself to her. And yet you continued for whatever reason. And there's all sorts of reasons. But you continued and you ended up getting bit. That's not the snake's fault. That's your fault. A mature man who's pursuing a woman addresses red flags early. And I'm not saying he dumps her, throws her to the curb. I'm saying that he addresses the red flags early by setting up boundaries, by being ultimately responsible, uh, by taking, uh, in, uh, looking for internal validation, by making yourself the center of the universe, not her, by doing everything else. You're addressing red flags early. You're communicating these things. And you know what? If these red flags don't get addressed and don't get fixed, you're gone. You're gone. Because again, she's not the first woman. She's not going to be the last woman. She's certainly not the only woman. So don't be picking up snakes and playing with the snakes when you know exactly what they are. And again, disclaimer, I'm not saying all women are snakes, but there's some and they're out there and you know who they are because you know what their behavior is. Do not overlook it. Address those things early. And the last one, guys, uh, and all of these have importance, but I think this one's critical is that uh, a man who's chasing is controlled by his emotions. 
he gets excited and he and he and he finds her intriguing and mysterious and he loves her and he has all of these emotional attachments to her and because of that he's blinded to everything else he doesn't do anything else that i talked to you about today he's following around like a little puppy and if she gives him a little pat on the head or gives him some attention he's wagging his tail and he's so excited because he finally has a woman's attention and what he does is he lets his emotions run wild He lets his emotions do things that he normally or otherwise wouldn't do, and it becomes a very, very real problem. On the other hand, this is one distinction I talk a lot about. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be emotional. Love is an emotion. Being intimately attracted to a woman is emotional. That's okay. I'm not saying that a man isn't emotional. It's not what I'm saying at all. In fact, what I'm saying is that a man is emotional, but when you're maturely pursuing a woman, It's that you understand your emotions and then you check your emotions. You don't suppress them. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you understand what those emotions are telling you, that I am interested, that I am fascinated, that I would like to pursue this woman. And then you use that as a barometer, a gauge for your plan of action, not to run reckless and not to be wild and crazy and not to be stupid and overlook these red flags, but to address it properly, effectively, to come up with a plan, and then to incorporate all the other seven differentiating factors that I talked with you about today. Guys, your emotions are not bad. Even the ones that we would consider quote unquote negative, they're not bad. Emotions are simply indicators that something's happening, that you want to pursue or move towards something, or you want to disengage and move away from something else entirely. A mature man who's pursuing a woman understands what those emotions are telling him, and then he acts accordingly, using intellect and reasoning, excuse me, and rationale to be able to ultimately achieve what it is he's after, whether it's intimacy with a woman or a new uh, promotion or starting a new business or getting into the gym or whatever he's after. So ultimately, and here's what I wrote on my little, my little notepad here. I've got them circled is that when you're chasing a woman, it's because you're immature. That's what boys do. Boys chase tail. If you will, boys chase women, mature, healthy men pursue the things they're after, including women. And those eight differentiating factors are all underlined by whether you're being a mature male or whether you're being an immature little boy. So let me break this down real quick and then we'll call it a day. Number one, again, we're going to talk about the difference in the factors between chasing and pursuing. Chasing, a man has no boundaries. Pursuit, on the other hand, is healthy, well-established boundaries. Number two, chasing is making the woman the center of your universe. Pursuing is making yourself the center of the universe. Number three, Chasing means that you don't accept any responsibility, that as long as she does what she's supposed to do and pursues you or, or, or stops and lets you catch her, then everything is good. Pursuit, on the other hand, is taking ultimate responsibility and focusing on yourself and what you can control. Number four, chasing, looking for her validation, external validation. Pursuit, on the other hand, is internal validation. You validate yourself and you become more attractive when you do. <clears throat> Number five, chasing is you're begging for what you want versus pursuit articulating what you want and then working towards it. Number six, you're constantly asking for other people, in this case, her permission. Uh, Pursuit, on the other hand, is being assertive, taking initiative, and ultimately going after what it is you want with or without permission. Uh, And again, disclaimer, especially when it comes to intimacy, I'm I'm not saying that you don't need permission for that, okay? Or you don't need her her consent, okay? We, We should know that. It's sad I would even need to say that. Uh, And then number seven with chasing is you're blinded by her. Uh, You're delusional. You're overlooking red flags. Pursuit, on the other hand, means that your eyes are open, that you're operating in reality, that you see the red flags and you address them accordingly and make your actions based on the the response or the result of addressing those red flags. And then number eight with chasing is you're controlled by your emotions Uh, On the other hand, pursuit is understanding what those emotions are telling you and then checking them and then acting accordingly. Again, the underlying difference is immature little boy, mature, capable, healthy man. I think we can all agree that everybody listening to this podcast or watching it because we're on YouTube as well can, can see that they want to move towards being a mature man. That's what all of us want. We wouldn't be listening to this podcast if it wasn't the case. And I hope those eight factors help you. Uh, If you have a friend a colleague, a coworker, a brother, 
another man in your life who falls into the left side of this chart, which is the chasing side, share this podcast, please, with them before it's too late because they are going to do something stupid. I can guarantee you they're going to do something stupid. We do stupid things all the time for members of the opposite sex. It's kind of in our nature at times, I think, but we need to be a little bit more intentional, a lot bit more intentional and deliberate. So this will help them move from the left side, the wrong side, to the right side, the correct side, okay? Chasing, pursuing. Anyways, guys, I hope that helps. Again, check us out on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, glad you're here. Um, we're going to do a lot more videos on YouTube, and I think this is going to be a good addition to what we're doing. Uh, it's going to get the message out there. That's what really what we want to do, is we want to get this message of reclaiming and restoring masculinity to more men who need this message. The world needs more men, and it's my goal, goal to give you the tools and the resources and guidance and direction uh, to become the type of man that you have a desire to become and the type of man that uh, people are relying upon you to be. So as I part, again, make sure you check out the main event, which is in May, the end of May uh, 2020. You can head to orderaman.com slash main event. If you want to know more about this subject or other subjects and you want to have some brotherhood and camaraderie and accountability, then check out the Iron Council, uh, orderaman.com slash Iron Council. All right, guys. That's it for now. We'll be back on Tuesday. Got another great interview podcast lined up. Again, this will be on YouTube as well as well the interview. Uh, make sure you subscribe, leave a rating and review, leave some comments, subscribe to YouTube, uh, and continue to band with us. Thanks for being on the journey, and uh, we'll catch you on Tuesday. Until then, go out, take action, become the man you are meant to be.